I recently extended my valve index cable with a 16 feet cable, totaling my distance to 32 feet so that I could use cable management to make my VR experience feel wireless. Now this video focuses on the valve index, but you can probably use this same setup for any other VR headset, you just might need different cables. So in this video I'll show you both what cables I use for the 16 feet extension, so you could uh, copy that. Stick around till the end of the video to find out how I manage my cables permanently now for the index. Hey everyone, Cass here, and if you want to join us in this discovery of uh, virtual reality worlds, subscribe with you. I would love to have you on board. And now, join me beyond reality. So why this video? The Valve Index has a 5 meter tether that is connected to a 1 meter breakaway trident connector. This is long enough for small to medium play spaces, if you have your PC close by it that is. Our play space is around 6.5 by 6.5 feet, but our PC is further away, about 13 feet further. So it happens often that we tuck the cable by accident or almost trip over it when we try to turn around. You learn to live with it, but it's probably better for the headset to find a solution. This won't happen if you have a very long cable as it will lay on the floor and soon enough you will learn to step over it without tripping. So if you feel like you are tucking your cable a lot like us, then getting an extension cable might be helpful for you too. If you get an extension, you would also be able to do some of the nifty cable management solutions that allow the cable to hang over your head and that gives you the feeling you're using a wireless headset. Personally, I needed this solution for our yaw motion simulator since the thing spins around 360 degrees all the time and without cable management, the cable would get tangled up too fast. But when I was looking for solutions online, I noticed a lot of Valve Index users have been asking this same question and that there were a lot of uncertainties. Many cables do not work or they would get something very expensive, which isn't needed. So I wanted to make a video sharing what I use with success and some tips and tricks of what I've learned so far. If you're looking for a specific subject, as always, I added timestamps uh, which you can find in the description below. So the valve index connects to a trident connector that ends in three cables, a DisplayPort 1.2, USB 3.0 and a 12 volt power cable. What we need to extend is the DisplayPort cable and USB cable. But, as with all the cables, the length has a direct impact on the quality of information being transmitted. The biggest problem would be extending the DisplayPort cable, as if you use one that's too long, it might cause you to lose signal quality, like you could get screen flickering or not able to do higher refresh rates or higher resolutions anymore. Obviously, we don't want all that. We want to be able to keep doing the higher refresh rates of 144Hz on a resolution as high as the computer can handle. Before we move on, I have to be honest here, I am no cable expert. I'm learning as we go as well, but I can at least share what I've learned with you. And if you've got some tips yourself, please do share them. I mean, we're in this adventure together, right? So what I found out is that a passive DisplayPort cable won't be able to handle long distances well, much like USB cables actually. While a maximum cable length isn't defined in the DisplayPort standard, most of the time longer than 3 meters, so 10 feet, won't work well. So if you need longer distances than 3 meters, then you are going to need something that helps boost the signal, like an active cable or an active repeater. This is what works for me. I bought a mill to mill DisplayPort 1.4 cable by Cable Decon. It is 16.4 feet long and I picked it up because it's said to be able to handle 4K at 144 Hz. I also picked up an active Cable Matters DisplayPort 1.4 repeater. This repeater can extend the signal for a VR headset that is up to 32 feet apart. It does need external power to function though, so the box includes a 6 feet micro USB charging cable that you can put in a USB wall charger. Then for the USB, I am using this active extension USB 3.0 cable by Cable Creation. But actually, I found that you don't need an active USB cable. I also tried a passive 5 meter USB 3.0 cable, which are cheaper cables and it seems to work as well. But I have to say that I haven't spent much time with that cable. 
So I put this PlayPort's extension cable in my PC and the other end to the input connector of the repeater. This is important as the cable matters repeater is unidirectional. This means that what direction you plug in the cable matters. Cable matters. <laughs> then the headset's display port slot goes into the output connector of the repeater. So this is the VR headset cable. The active USB extension cable goes in my PC as well. And I plug in the headset's USB cable at the other end. Now the repeater and the headset need some electricity to work. So I made sure to place an outlet extender box near these cables and I connected the headset there. The repeater power cable to using a random wall charger. And this setup works great. I'm able to play games on 144Hz for over an hour without any signal loss or latency problems. The image quality and colors all look the same to me as well. This setup costs around 66 US dollars, but I think you can get cheaper cables as long as you use the Cable Matters repeater. For the DisplayPort cable, make sure you get a mill to mill 1.4 version if you use the repeater that it is, and one that supports 4K at 144Hz. For the USB, make sure to get a USB 3.0 cable. If you don't need 32 feet and only like 3 or 6.5 feet extra, then you can also try it without a repeater. You just need a male to female cable then. One of our lovely mods, KCB, has told me that this uh, male to female DisplayPort 1.2 cable of 3 feet works for him without a repeater. But this is a Dutch store so I couldn't find this on Amazon to link it, but there should be a lot of similar ones on there. Now, there are a few things to take into account when you use or set up, but before we move on, while you're watching this video, leave us a like if you found the video helpful so far. If the extension doesn't work for you, there could be a couple of reasons. Like, DisplayPort cables can also be unidirectional. So if it still doesn't work, try switching the cable ends around to see if that works for you. It could also be that you are running on different computer specs or that the cable isn't compatible or fast enough. I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. So if you're using different computer specs, your mileage may vary. Make sure you get a cable with the right specifications as I mentioned earlier in the video. A last tip is to buy a cable at a store that allows you to return it as extending cable seems to be a trial and error for a lot of people online. Okay, so I then moved on to the cable management solution. I'm using this lamp which you can get from IKEA, it's called Recolit, but you could probably find similar solutions. This is actually a solution familiar to those who are in the VR community for a while. You can find many images online on Reddit, but I've never needed to use it. I'm glad I finally found the time to work this out though, and I'll tell you why in a bit. People use this lamp because you can extend it pretty high. To give you a better idea, my ceiling is about 8.5 feet high. And this lamp is flexible too, so you can use it to hang your VR cable at the top and you still have some wiggle room. Having the cable float on top of your head will make it feel like you're playing VR wirelessly and that's the main reason people do it this way. I have found that everyone adds their own twist to it. At first I tried using the lamp by putting the cable through the cable organizers that came in the box. However, the cable would then not be flexible enough and made it impossible for me to crouch. Or the cable would hang a little around me and if that happens and I try to turn it around, I can choke myself. Which isn't a very nice feeling. So I also got these pulleys. These do not come with the lamp. These are pulleys that a lot of people in the community use to tape on their ceiling for cable management. However, as you can see, my ceiling is textured and tape doesn't stick well on it. Some people drill holes in their ceiling to make it stick, but I don't like drilling holes in my house. So that's why I placed these pulleys on the lamp instead. I put four of them on the lamp. As you can see, you can use more if you want. And for now, I'm using shoelaces to bind the pulleys on the lamp, but I should probably find a better looking solution. I'm also using some Velcro here to keep this top part in place as it can slide around. Uh, the front pulley has a different hanger, as you can see, a different hook. And I feel like this one is nice for the front part as the cable doesn't slide too much in it. It's uh, kept in place, which is handy for this setup. As you can see, I already put the valve index cables through the pulleys. And before every use, I do make sure that my cable is on top of my head, so it's not still hanging. This also makes it possible for users of any height to use this setup. And as you may know, Cherry is taller 
smaller than me, about 16 centimeters. So I always need to put the cable a bit higher for her. And that is possible because of the front pulley. And as you can see, this works well. The pulleys make it possible for you to duck and crouch. And when you stand up, the cable will go back in place nicely. I'm able to make turns as I want and I don't feel the cable anymore. It's a super nice feeling actually. It does feel like I'm playing wirelessly with the Valve Index, which is why I'm glad I finally did this. Now the only other thing I was worried about is that I would tangle my cable too much. So to make sure you don't keep on tangling your cable, you should also download this free tool called Turn Signal that shows you how many times you've turned so that you can untangle it manually every so often. I've seen people going even more pro with this setup. People have been using dog leashes as the front pulley or other innovative solutions like attaching the cable to her belt at her backs too to avoid the cable hanging around. And then there are also different versions of the pulleys nowadays that may work better. If you're interested in doing it too, definitely check out the links below, but also look around to see what would suit your home situation best. We still have a lot of work to do as well to fine tune our setup, like we still need a spot to store a VR headset somewhere near the lamp. So I feel like I've said pulleys way too much in this video and also what's up with these cable ends being called male to female. I just now realize how a little weird that is, but it does make it easier to remember. But uh, that's it, this is my new permanent valve index setup until hopefully something better comes around. I mean, uh, maybe Valve will release the uh, wireless adapter. Valve, I'm looking at you. You can also probably use the same setup, like I said before, with every other VR headset. So let me know what you think and if you are going to use it uh, in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you want to support us further, how about you watch more videos that are on the screen right now? Anyway, stay safe as well. And a special thanks goes to our uh, patrons and right hand patron back on VR. Support him supporting us by checking out his YouTube channel. And as always, VR on.